Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Apollo Art Analysis. Today we're going to be looking at a piece by the artist Imposter. He is actually an artist working primarily in the medium of digital rendering, and he draws a lot of inspiration from the movement of glitch art. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about this striking iridescence. We're going to talk a little bit about kind of light-based visual energy, and we're also going to talk about the influence of the glitch art movement and also crystals as divine catalysts of light. So let's jump right into it. So whenever you first see this piece, you know, you're met with a GIF. Of course, it is a motion picture piece here. And it's kind of this rotating glitch gemstone. And this, of course, is set against this midnight black void. And, you know, this, this gemstone is multi-sided. So there's a lot of variation within the form of this subject here. And it almost feels like an impossible rendering as it kind of uh, flows and morphs into itself there, almost like an infinite snake. So we see how it's set upon this midnight black backing, and this, of course, intensifies the light to the highest degree. This really draws our attention to the color within the work and, of course, this striking iridescence. And what I mean by iridescence is just the sheer amount of diverse color within this piece. So let's say we take... So I have a little bit of other screenshots from it. Like I said, it is a GIF, so it kind of rotates and it shimmers in its in its kind of iridescent dance there. So on the left, you'll see one of the screenshots, of course, a lot of different colors within this. Second one, more of a blue-green in this one, but of course it is shifting and kind of possessing the crystal in a way and moving towards that. So really interesting form whenever you first see this work and it's kind of rotating in that midnight black vacuum. And so you'll see, it, of course, it is set in center emphasis. And whenever an element of a piece of art is in the center, it normally draws your attention mainly by the visual harmony. And of course, whenever something's in the center, it almost draws your your attention to it from every corner going in. And so I think that's really important whenever we're taking a look at this work. You know, it sits within the center and of course it draws our attention with absolute ease. And so it also accents itself mainly through this light on dark contrast, which of course is achieved by that midnight blacking that we just talked about here in a second. So just light within this work is this eh, just incredible degrees of fluorescence. This this glitch gemstone is pretty, uh, it's translucent. So of course that allows light to maximize its effect to the highest degree possible. And just the, the amount of light and color within this work really drives a lot of visual energy for the, for the resulting viewer. You know, it really invigorates a sense of energy and almost gets your heart beating whenever you first see this work. And it really pulls you in. And I think that immerses the viewer to the densest degree possible as well. So I think that's also pretty important whenever taking a look at this work. And so, you know, that, that energy, of course, is always pretty native to the crystals. Crystals or gemstones, whatever you want to refer to them as, are translucent objects. And this really allows light to intensify to the, mo to the highest degree possible. And so what I call them specifically are divine catalysts of light. And what I mean by that is whenever you take a gemstone or a crystal and you put it to a source of light, the light within the, within the gemstone just kind of it intensifies or it acts as a catalyst of that. Of course, it reflects and it also refracts light as well. So, you know, if we take a look, say, uh, metaphorical symbolism, say early humans, you know, you kind of ask yourself why we wear jewelry or why we collect these gemstones that have such a an interesting shimmer. I think the the reason for that is mainly because we put light on such a high pedestal, mainly through metaphorical symbolism, whether it's mythology and religion. You know, you have the light against darkness or anything that is light, such as the sun, is seen as good. And anything such as darkness or a kind of a dark forest is seen as the unknown or uh, dangerous or bad as a result. So we kind of put light on a pedestal because of that. And I think that gemstones have really followed that trend as well. Like I said, whenever you hold a gemstone or a crystal up to the light, it really intensifies that light. So we may place these on a pedestal because of their, their ability to transform and intensify light to the highest degree. And of course, if you can intensify the light, then you can intensify the divine as well. So even in the darkest of days, you know, you can take a gemstone, put it up to the light, and kind of feel this almost magic or divine sense that, that really comes from that. So I think that's also important to note whenever I take a look at this work. Like I said, they are kind of divine catalysts of light, and that's what I always really f refer to them as. And so the form of our subject is kind of possessed by this light and color within here. So you see, of course, just the incredible display of diverse color within this work. But we also see these kind of, maybe I can pull this next to that will help us a little bit 
So you see this, this kind of like bits of code, whether it's letters or numbers, and they kind of, as the GIF moves, there's like this sense of snaking energy that kind of possesses the piece. And it's it's shimmering, you know, it's dazzling. It really draws your attention. That also reinforces some of that light-based visual energy that we referred to uh, here a second ago. And that really just goes within the form, really invigorates the visual experience just like before. And that really adds to the overall magical sense of the work. So I think that's also important whenever taking a look at this work. Like I said, it feels like it's possessed by that light or possessed by that sense of magic. And what I see here is, Really, the spirit of the digital genesis. We, of course, our lives are completely changed by, by these digital tools, whether it's virtual reality or whether it's the screens we use every day. But the, the digital genesis has been a very, very, very important uh, timeline or important milestone whenever with, with the human development as a whole. So I think that's also really important to note. Of course, we do see influences of the glitch art movement within this piece as well. Imposter really loves that glitch art aesthetic, whether it's the first piece we ever showcased, which was Deconstructed Sentience. It's kind of like a, a portraiture form split into multiple forms. Um, like I said, you know, he really likes that glitch art and he draws a lot of influence from that as well. And glitch art, of course, originated from... You know, you see kind of a software or a hardware malfunction. Let's say you have a mixing pixel or a broken screen or just the software isn't working and there's kind of a, a glitch or malfunction. And because of that, you know, that's normally a source of anxiety. You know, we're, we're kind of like, why did our screen break? Why isn't the software working or anything, you know, in that context? But what the glitch art glitch artists did was they took that sense of anxiety or that lack of control or that unknown element and then they put it into a medium which they could master and control so now you see glitch artists they recreate these software malfunctions deliberately to really bring that in and to kind of revive that sense of kind of that sense of chaos but of course all within a a sense of order and a medium which you can master and control. So I see some influences of that here as well, mainly in those little bits of text that kind of snake and possess through the piece, but also in kind of that kind of refracted and reverberating forms within the work as well. So I think those all really combine to create a really magical, a divine and almost spiritual visual experience in its final result. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, go check out some of Imposter's other works. I'm actually thinking about doing a an artist showcase pretty soon here, where we'll take a look at some of, you know, all of his all of his pieces that we showcased to date and see what we can learn from that. Just as a whole, looking at his profile specifically. So, like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed. In this piece, we talked a little bit about this kind of iridescent energy that kind of light and magic that comes from the work. We talked about the influences of glitch art, and then we also talked about gemstones as divine catalysts of light. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Hope you guys learned something. Go check out Imposter's other works. He's doing a bunch of different things. And if you guys want to support some of his work directly, I know he does have some pieces minted on the global digital art market. So if you want to support his work directly, that's going to be the best way to reach him. So I hope you guys enjoyed. My name is Apollo. This was Apollo Art Analysis, and I'll see you guys on the next episode. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you'd like to support our work directly, please check out our Apollo community tokens. Apollo Art Exchange is an ecosystem of art appreciation which elevates artists each and every day. Thanks for listening.